Hey, Steve, what are you reading over there? Dude, it's the graphic novel that uh, Hayden Cockrell just put out. He and Bob worked on it called The Crimson Six, oh, yeah. and it is really cool, man. Well, what's cool about it, man? Well, let me tell you about it. Okay. Here's the write-up, movie trailer version. Beneath the history of mankind, an ancient evil has lurked. A nightmarish master plan orchestrated from centuries past will plunge humanity into oblivion, paving the way for a new world to rise. The Reaper is done waiting, and his Sith is primed for harvest. Yet this world is not without hope. Another power is at play, a task force made up of six superhuman defenders known as the, the Crimson, Crimson Six. Six. And now, armed with a new recruit, they may finally be able to vanquish Reaper once and for all. Will they be victorious? Or will death prove to be the greatest conqueror of all? Doom, doom, doom. Woohoo! Crimson Six, ah. folks! Dig it. You know, it really is interesting. I mean, you open that up and the action starts now. I mean, it's boom. Yeah, right you're not off. even six frames in and there's yeah. already just some craziness going it's on. It's just like a real movie. Yeah, it okay. is. I, so, I, I dig it. So what we got, you know, we're, I'm very excited to be here in our producer's place and hanging out with Steve and we've got some really cool bands. We are still part of the metal world here and I kind of dig right. the Phoenix thing there, but Oblivion Myth, love you guys. We got these little coasters. What's going on in the teaching world there, Steve? So we're going to try to roast your brain once more, rock your brain, and uh, we're going to get into some spirituality type stuff. And basically, we're going to pick up kind of where we left off last week with a discussion that we had with somebody when we were out on the lake with, gosh, just a ton of sanctuary folk. It was mm -hmm. so much fun. We spent all day and got totally burned out there. It was like three decades worth of friends, some old and some new. Yeah, indeed. It was it was really cool. But anyway, you know, we have we have not everybody who hangs out in our circle uh, all we believe the same way that we do. Mm. And so it sparks for some interesting conversation. And one of the neatest things I think to come out of it was some some good thoughts, some challenging material that I had to take a look at, you know, what I believed and and, and uh, from the other belief system, what that dictated and try to make sense of it the way that truth works. We've been talking a lot about how truth works, how to discern truth. And there really are some methodologies that you can use. and. You know, you don't have to be a necessarily an analytical thinker to get it all. Just apply a couple different questions and you'll be able to formulate your own reasonable answer based on something as simple as logic. Can you prove it? Do you have experience in some of these areas as well? Well, let me throw this out there. You actually called me up and you, you were going through some thought process with this. It really touched you. Yeah, yeah, it did. I mean, it, 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 there were some there were some challenging things in there, and the, but the closer I looked at it, the more I, uh, I I really understood that that those same belief systems could have you you change the centerpiece of it, and it can have a whole new meaning in the light of scripture. Mm -hmm. Not to say that you know, I mean, well, I mean, God says that that you know, he's his handiwork is in all creations. Romans one twenty. Or he says that, you know, just so that no man has an excuse. He can be seen. He can be found. He can be observed in these different things in nature and, and, and in relation, some certain types of relationships and, and all these different things that we see God move. And, um, you know, but if you don't understand the center or the focal point of the truth behind all this stuff, yeah, you're going to put some different names on it. You, you know, it doesn't matter necessarily the name, but understanding the one true God mm -hmm. is super important. You know, what's in a name? You know, God called himself I Am. Well, that's not much of a name. Hey, dear I Am. Yeah, there's will people you? say that's it. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> I know. his real name. Yeah. I Am. Well, oh. no. Okay, so in Greek, was it Ego Ami? Uh, you know, I don't like praying to Egos, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> We're going to get in trouble. <laughs> That's what you know, we talk about. We anyways, hang out. This is a yeah. So I mean, we're, yeah, we're poking fun somewhat at, at some serious stuff, but just gotta lighten it up a little bit uh, from time to time. Um, 
Let's get into the, let's get into what we're going to be talking about today. So we're going to continue on with some practical application. I, I just hear that grandma going like, where's the meat? Where's the beef? Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. You're about ready to get it. Here we go. So, um, we're talking about spirituality. We have, uh, it, people have tried to get rid of God out of the center of it, but there's a, there's a, there's a terrible link. There's a terrible kink in all those armors. Mm. And that has to do with why does humanity tend to, given a rope, want to take, or an inch of rope, want to take a mile. A mile, yeah. Yeah. Why is it that we always want to get as far to the edge of what could be considered decent as possible? What is it that sends us down despicable trails of evil that we look back on you know, our lifetime and sometimes wonder, how in the world did I get here? Yes. How is my life so screwed up? Well, let me say this. Yeah. I, last week, I was talking about my, I have a friend, and they would take me to the edge of my comfortness, you know, my comfortability. And yeah. I'm like thinking, that sounds like cusping. They're taking me on the cusp. Well, mm -hmm. cusping actually means something else that has nothing to do with taking yourself to the edge. But why is it that when we explore the edge, why do we have the tendency to want to run a mile instead of like staying in the comfort of like, and, I well, that's, I'm not supposed to go over there. Right. And that, that's, that's the problem that a, a non Christian centered worldview will confront mm -hmm. is what do you do with evil? Yes. And we also talked last week about justice People misunderstanding God's justice as being hateful. A being of love cannot also cohabitate uh, 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 judgment. Mm. There is yeah. no such thing as judgment if you're all love. But as we read from the James Stewart quote that you read last week, we yeah. see that there is, in a sense, a duality there, like a contrariety, contrariety that... Uh, it that, took a that, week to that be able we have to learn to, that word. <laughs> right. Yeah, that we have to be able to understand about the personality of God in order to understand him in the full. He is both mercy and judgment at the same time. Mm -hmm. He is both authoritative and gentle at the same time. And uh, it, it's the best way to speak to our hearts it, it is, is a combination of both. Get your you attention get the, real quick. Yeah, it sure I does. Mean, I, mean, I get spanked all the time. God <laughs> spank me. I was like, you got my attention. Yeah, Always. exactly, exactly. So anyway, so, so a lot of these worldviews are trying to get rid of God. Okay. Uh, because, it, 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 but the problem they continually confront is evil, and we'll get into that here right now. Because if you're getting rid of, if you're trying to explain away evil, you have to explain away what Jesus had to do with evil. And the, the cross, no, you don't want to touch the cross because that's where the main focus of Jesus' uh, uh, life's purpose, that is the main focus there. And all the prophecies leading up to that through, uh, what is it, 66 books, 44 authors, over 1,500 years, and yet you have a, 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 uh, a, a cohesive message the entire way through. The first sacrifice happened in Genesis chapter 2 before there was even a temple, before there were even Hebrews, before any of this stuff. What happened when, when Adam and Eve chose to eat of the, knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? They realized their nakedness and went yeah. and hid. Yes. And God brought skin clothes to give to them. He had to slaughter an animal. In another place in Scripture, it says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So even then, that shows... That through sacrifice, that, that through the sacrifice, through the shedding of blood, those sins were covered and they were clothed and wrapped in that to hide their shame. Mm -hmm. And what is it that we are constantly trying, as a human being, a, 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 uh, uh, as a, uh, that, that, that doesn't have anything to do with God, we're trying to get rid of anything that brings shame. Absolutely, right there. I mean, one of the biggest things people talk about all the time is guilt and shame. And how are they going to be able to cover that up? Mm -hmm. and cover it up with distraction and conveniences. Yeah, exactly. And exactly right. The same thing. So it's natural. Jesus says, so if Jesus was just a good teacher. Right. That's the big, the big conversation the past exactly. few weeks. Exactly. Jesus was just a teacher. Then why... Did he say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. That's pretty Catch bold this. statement. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. 
well, wait a second. Mm -hmm. How is that possible? They've only seen Jesus at this point. Yes. He is saying, hey, if you've seen me, you've seen the big guy too. Mm -hmm. I am the same as the big guy. That was Jesus's first claim. And then later on, or when being accused in the Jewish high court of uh, why did Jesus answer in this very particular way when the high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God, tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. And Jesus said, you have said so, but I say to all of you, from now on you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming down on the clouds of heaven. And at that point, the Pharisees basically were like, we don't need to hear anything more. He has blasphemed before the high God. They yeah, tore their robes. The yeah, they went nuts because it was such an offensive yes. thing that Jesus said just then mm -hmm. that they were absolutely out of their minds appalled. So, and anybody who is, you know, in the Jewish faith at the time would have understood that same thing. It's not just something that if you get into scripture and you really study, then you'd understand that. No, this was from kids on up yeah. you don't equate yourself no. with god that is mm -mm. so Doesn't imagine happen. yourself out there would you do that to a big huge political or religious organization that you know that is strict form part of society and say i'm just going to defy you right there that took a lot unless it was really true so either exactly he really either he had a death or wish or yeah want to kill himself yeah that's what was going to happen exactly would you do that i don't think i'd do that no, yeah, I, I don't. Well, I mean, well, I just look at it. I would never make that claim because I know what it would trouble it would get me into. Yes. I know it's not true. Uh, and even if I had a big head about it, uh, there's a certain sense of self-preservation that should kick in to say I'm pushing it a little bit far. Mm -hmm. Unless you were so sold out on your belief system that you didn't care. You know, uh, that that's that's just it, it's it's insane. So he wasn't that just a, if he was a if if he was just a good teacher yeah then he was crazy right so you know even with uh what do they call it being really zealous about something yeah he still had proof all around him everybody was seeing the things that he was doing it wasn't mm -hmm. just a bunch of hot air right exactly i mean the miracles that he performed he brought people back from the dead healed them all those different kind mm -hmm. of things now understand that we have a lot of proof of these kind of stuff there's proofs of some of the Gospels that go all the way back to within two years of Jesus' resurrection. Paul quotes a creed in, in 1 Corinthians 15, and, 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 and uh, it, was, it was something that was passed down orally probably within the first couple years of the Christian faith. And then on top of that, Luke, who, is a, you know, who secularists will acknowledge, this guy was a good historian, he has a good background, he's got a good head on his shoulders, reported things in a very certain orderly way like a doctor would. And um, in Acts, he also penned that. That was, uh, and there's no mention in there of the sacking of Jerusalem in AD 70, which only happened about 35 years after the resurrection. Mm. So you still, I remember things that happened 30 years ago. I know what we did 35 years ago. I mean, ago. I just moved to sanctuary 30 years ago. I lived in my sister's apartment. I remember the details of that apartment. I yeah. remember, you know, it's the, I remember the beach house and the That's different right. shenanigans, the stories that happened there. I still remember the day he picked me up at the airport and we went to the beach 30 some years ago. Exactly. So yeah, exactly. Possible. So, you know, you're not going to get far from the truth and yet you have, you know, you're not going to have like the, like uh, this is just passed down, this is passed down, this is passed down. 300 years later, everybody decides to write it down. Mm. You know, the, the certain facts may have been lost, but no, this is easily within 30 years. Yes. And yet that is, you know, there are all sorts of quotes from these different books back to Mark, which seems to be, have, have probably been written within about five years of the resurrection. And so, um, I mean, I could be wrong, but a lot of like what I hear coming from about Buddha it was 200 years afterwards. That is that's a big difference. If, 30 one years of the most respected years. historians of or, uh, uh, of uh, and and philosophers from way back and scientists to say Plato and Aristotle, they are looked at as ironclad, hundred percent verifiable, 500 years. Wow, 500 years. Mm. I think was the, I don't remember that for sure. I know it was more than a few hundred. I know it was less than a thousand, you know, but uh, 
uh, I could look it up. I mean, look it up. I mean, yeah, yeah. The, between between the time that the stuff was passed down orally to the time where it was actually scribed down, it was a long space of time in there. And yet these guys are historical. And so it just shows a bias, if nothing else. It, always, it, it, it But Christianity, I mean, it's like news hot off the press. Hot off the press. And so at any rate... Um, Jesus was either a liar, a lunatic, or Lord. Either he wasn't a good example at all, or he was the ultimate example. You choose. So here's where we're going to get into some of that conversation piece that we talked about before and some of the things that were asserted. And I just want to take a look at a couple of those things to be able to really kind of um, uh, see how it adds up with some of the tests of truth compared with my worldview and that different worldview is, you know, I thought there was a lot of really good things in there. Mm -hmm. And I thought there were, you know what, I can't think of any scripture or, or, or doctrine or anything like that, that any of these would w go against. But as it's far sort of as like practice. that, when you're shooting a bow and arrow and you're going for center, but if you're a little bit off, you're going to basically still miss the mark. So yeah. that's what was happening is like, you could be just a little off and you'll still be missing the whole point. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, again, this is just interpretation from, you know, I think a lot of these different worldviews are, are, are just a misinterpretation of what they don't understand about God having a, the, his personality being so unique. Mm -hmm. And you tend to focal, focal, <clears throat> focus on one aspect or the other when it's actually both. And so you tend to, you know, sometimes get disappointed when you come to know God and there are so many things about them that just seem contrary. It's because, you know, they're not contradictory. They are, they demonstrate contrariety. Right. So we're so, getting into connected anyways. dots instead of a can of worms. Exactly. So we exactly. Don't want to so title this show. Right. <laughs> uh, so most spiritualist worldviews involve doing good works or gaining enlightenment from wise teachers. For example, Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, Gandhi. Uh, religion is considered a construct of spirituality without ascribing to a corruptible, man-made system of worship. Yes, every religion has had its own downfalls yeah. and done some stupid stuff. Which one is valid? Which one was abused? Which one is telling the truth? And you have to understand what it takes to verify truth and, and, and start to figure out the, 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 by raising questions. Asking questions of these different views as, as the different thoughts come up, as the different truth assertions are made, you can begin to stack that up against... Now, that's the thing that I was kind of struggling with, actually, is mm. keeping up with my analysis of what was being said. Yes. It's like, I'm not going to swallow hook, line, and sinker everything that someone else tells me, no matter how impassioned it is, mm. without passing it through certain filters or tests you got to have the filters and, yeah. and you're still you're not out bashing any of these things because i love a lot of the things that the buddha had supposedly said right and some of them were applicable to my life and yeah. my relationship that i have with god yeah but the hook line and sinker no i'm not going to necessarily agree 100 percent. i've got my stability for a reason right because, and, and because of, we understand from and this is before darren actually kind of joined in but one of the things we continue to chime on is that you cannot have a philosophy that is not also balanced by science and history mm -hmm. because like christianity with all its mysticism and superstitions and stuff like that that we came out of the 1500s with we started to get knocked down by science pretty quick and proved that these were not the doctrinal Christianity that Paul taught, that the apostles taught, that Jesus taught. These are far removed from that. I mean, people were having, this is one of the reasons for the, in 1501, the, the Protestant Reformation, Reformation, I think it was 1501, with Martin Luther mm -hmm. and uh, the, 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 the 99 Thesis. He was trying to get away from uh, uh, the, the, the mandates that you had to pay indulgences in order to get a person out of hell. And of course, it'd just go to the coffers and, you know, you could only have the uh, Bible read in Latin. You could only uh, pray through a priest or do confession through a priest. Yeah. All these different things are things that are not taught in Scripture. I mean, is it good to confess your sin to somebody who can keep you accountable? Yeah, that's cool. So in that sense, certain aspects of priesthood is good. 
because yeah. it's good to have a compatriot when you're going through tough times. Right. And, but you know, there's and only yes. one mediator right. between God and man, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And so when you're, you're saying these things, it's like, well, these are man-made things trying to appease God. Right. So that's what you're coming at when you're talking about these world religions. A absolutely. Yeah, different worldviews from Christianity. We're just kind of ironing. At, we're taking certain aspects of, 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 of a spirituality, spirituality slash universalism, uh, maybe a little bit of Taoism thrown in, uh, kind of a look at the uh, 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 some of those belief systems. Did you say throw in the towel? <laughs> I could, but I'm not there yet. Um, so throw in the towelism. It to throw in the towelism. <laughs> towelism. So, towelism. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so some may say that uh, we are all an offshoot of God or okay. Godhead or some type of es uh, energy essence that is like a Godhead. Uh, that that a part of it was beamed down to earth yeah. into a physical body and is reincarnating over and over to attain that which was left in the first place, namely the power, love, and enlightenment with which you were once united as one entity with all people, consciousnesses, and, uh, you know, ever. Uh, and then... But it boils down to where they always you just get a say, first birth well, from there. I am God, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so, yes. you know, you're like the little raindrop in the, in the ocean. But I just turn that around and I go, well, realistically, if you like, we're God, you'd have to create something with ingredients that have never been made before, put together something right there and manifest and say, wow, that would make me a God to be able to physically do that. Right. And to so be a part of God is different yeah. than being God. Right. And, and I think a lot of these worldviews are basically saying that you are a slice of the same material. A piece of apple uh, pie is yeah, still an uh, apple pie. Exactly. Exactly. And this was a scoop of water out of the ocean and you're just this little part in this glass. But that would make sense if you remembered everything that you were beamed down with. So why don't we remember everything? Why so And, and like, why do yeah. you need to reattain why, when you come down here, do you need to reattain oneness with this divine atmosphere thing up there? Yeah. It just doesn't, I don't know how to describe it. You know, I, I'm trying not to be disrespectful. Well, we were but, saying like, you yeah. know, hey, if you're part of this and I just decided like toss that away, uh -huh. how does it find its way back to me? You and know? why was it tossed? Why, why did, did it decide to go on its own? Was it cast out? You know, what was, what was the thing? There are a whole bunch of different questions there. And so um, this type of worldview does away with the idea of responsibility for depravity or wickedness by calling it a necessary polarity to balance out goodness. In other words, you need good or else you wouldn't know what evil is. You need cold in order to know what warm is. Mm -hmm. You need light in order to understand what darkness is. Now, to me, yeah. I can sort of kind of get that because, yeah, I, you know, you wouldn't, you could roast to death, you know, so is hot bad, is cold bad because you could freeze to death, but no, you want to get to a closer balance. Yeah. To me, a lot of those things are more along the lines of, of observation, a statement of thing that exists. It doesn't understand why there, it does not assert why there is being above this existence this mere existence you know okay is it because we're part god no, i i have a hard time with that because why all of a sudden are there two states and you're struggling to get back to this state up here it doesn't make any it, it, it doesn't to me it doesn't make sense um and like you said before about the drop of water hmm. um about you, you in order to understand the cycle of life that this kind of worldview asserts, you have to look at it like a like a raindrop. You come down from the sky. Yes. You go through life. You flow down to the ocean. Yeah. And then you turn into a gaseous vapor and go back up to the sky. And then you could come back down. And then you could come back down. But what have you learned? Do you remember anything that you learned? Okay, yeah. So under maybe hypnosis or... I was part or, of a plant, uh, you know. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, even under hypnosis and, yes. and uh, you know, some people use lucid dreaming yes. and, and meditation states in order to contact their the, the experiences from their previous lives. Which then we were talking about on the boat. Yeah. How like your great grandmother, your grandmother, when she was pregnant with your mom... 
and your mom had her eggs in her at the time, that what your grandmother was experiencing at the time would be passed through that DNA into the eggs and everything that your mom had where yeah, you are. Yeah, and I, I don't could know be. about that. That's just what they're working <laughs> on now. Can yeah. we prove or disprove that, you know? Yeah, if that's able to be proved, I'll buy it, I mean, you know? But that's you, the closest see, the thing to reincarnation I can think of. Right, right, exactly. Scientific. You know, so the thing with, the, the thing with reincarnation is it's extremely subjective mm -hmm. and gosh we're gonna have three parts out of this well we might um, have part three coming up so uh you know it, so the, the the problem that i the problem that i see with the with the whole rein, reincarnation bit is is it is entirely subjective it is. and i can explain it away with using doctrine and scripture that somebody may not necessarily ascribe to but at the same time, if I can prove the scripture to be real and verifiable and authentic and historical and all that to boot, then I would be more inclined to believe in this because, yeah, it shows me this here and this happened over here. This happened over here. And so and so said and so and so said and, 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 and verifying, you know, people who have, like, have credentials or whatever. Uh, so those are the kind of things that that I look to the Bible for because it's verifiable. Reincarnation according to the scriptures, doesn't happen. It's for a man once to die and then the judgment. Yes. And so that, that kind of rules that out. But, you know, what about the stories of these different people that say that they've experienced these kind of things? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't deny that they believe the story at all. All I know Could is there be another reason for there, it? There could be. When I went to Vanderbilt and I worked at Vanderbilt, their library, the only thing I really wanted to get into was their library. And they had all these volumes and volumes of near-death experiences. That's all I cared about. I was like, yes, that was there. Can we prove or disprove that? Not really. Even though all these people say they had their story. Again, right. Again, it's subjective. Yes, exactly. And so here's the thing. When we're talking, let's just, start, let's just start with this one in particular. So what we're doing right here is we're trying to establish empirical evidence. This is one of the tests for truth. Experiential relevance, that's no problem on that question mm -hmm. right there. Is there reincarnation or am yeah, I continuous form of whatever? Yeah, experiential relevance, fine. Logical consistency depends on how good of a, a, of a quote unquote debater or whatever to make sense out of that stuff. And some of the things that maybe stretches across the board because we're dealing with the metaphysical here. We're not talking about something necessarily that you can substantiate 100% unless you have a book that can be verified that testifies to these things. Yes. That's the difference. Well, I hope that uh, karma doesn't really happen because I'd come back as a tone-deaf mockingbird, I think. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. And so I, I don't want to get into Steve. too much more, but um, if you guys want to go ahead and call in any questions or anything like that, please do so at uh, submissions at sanctuaryinternational.com and uh, put it to attention, connect the dots, Steve or Darren, and uh, we'll get those questions answered for you. And uh, at least to the best of our ability, we'll try to make some sense of it and yes. help you have a deeper understanding and walk with the Lord. And again, and we're not trying to knock anybody. Whether things no, that no, say no, no, not, absolutely not. It's I might all come... about getting a better relationship with the Lord. So. Ab absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I don't want to, you know, anyone who out there who believes along some of these things, these questions, these are questions that I, you know, forgive me if I come across as snide or anything like that. That is not my intent. It's just an invitation I, for a conversation. I just want to, I just want to, I'm just trying to put, you know, verification or proofs and use some critical thinking toward mm. certain belief systems to see, yeah, that there's parts of that that are good. There's parts of that that mm, doesn't quite add up. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, let's go ahead and pray. Yes. And uh, we'll go. We'll, we'll be back again next week. Same hair. Same time. hair time. Same, same hair, hair channel. channel. <laughs> All right, Lord. Thank you very much for your word. Thank you very much for your presence. Thank you very much for reaching out and touching the people who needed to hear some of these things. And uh, God, I ask that you would help everyone to understand how to use the tools that, that we have at our disposal to give a, an answer for the hope that we have. And that we would have gentleness and respect when we're doing that and not be critical or, 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 or mean spirit or to just try to win an argument. Lord, I just ask that uh, in spite of the urgency to save souls, that we would temper that for the sake of love. Lord Jesus, thank you very much for everyone here. Bless us throughout the week. And watch over us this evening as we sleep. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.